Okay, in this video we're going to do a quick fractions intro and then we'll look at uh, identifying the numerator, denominator uh, and denominator of a fraction and then uh, figuring out whether a fraction is proper or improper. Okay, so we'll start with a fractions intro. So let's imagine you had a pizza. So a uh, pizza is just a circle and it's a hole. Okay, okay, so this is a whole pizza here. And if you split it into four pieces, okay, and, and let's say we take this piece here, okay, now the whole, the, the whole piece has been split into four equal parts, okay, so um, this, this one part out of the whole thing is called one fourth or one quarter because it's one part out of four. Okay, so a fraction you think of it as, as a part out of the whole, okay? Part out of whole. So one part out of four um, all, all together to, to make the whole, okay? So um, uh, let's imagine if I took this green piece and then this other green piece, okay? So these two together, what would, how, how could you describe this piece and this piece, right? Write it down, write it down. How can you describe these two pieces? Well, this is one fourth as well, isn't it? And this is one fourth. So you could say that this and this is two fourths or two quarters, right? Two quarters. And you could also say, isn't that exactly half of the pizza? So you could say that two fourths is the same thing as one half for fun. There, right? Okay. Okay, so now just just draw this uh, pizza and, and split it up uh, in this way. So you're just going to start with uh, make a dot in the center and put a line across and a line straight down. And then um, after that, put a line um, in this direction and a line in this direction. So you're splitting it up into, isn't that eight equal parts, right? So if I was to take one of these slices of pizza, how much of, um, what fraction of the pizza would this be? Write that down. What fraction would that be? Would it be one part out of eight total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? So that would be one eighth, right? And um, just for fun, what if you um, took this piece and this piece? Okay? How could you describe this piece and this piece? Uh, combined, if you take these two pieces out. Well, there's kind of there's kind of two ways of describing that. One way is you could say that that is two eighths, isn't it? If this is one eighth, that's one eighth, so we have two eighths of the pizza, right? And that's also equal to what? I mean, if you just imagine it as one whole piece here like that, how else could you write two eighths? Two eighths is definitely well. It's one quarter, isn't it? Just like we we're looking at back here, one quarter. Okay. So what if you make big pieces like this into three equal parts? What would uh, what fraction of the pizza would this piece be here? So there's three uh, pi uh, the pizzas split up into three parts, all the same size. So what fraction is this part? What fraction of a whole? Well, it's one part out of three altogether to make the whole, right? So one third, right? And um, <coughs> that now, what about what if you took this piece and this piece? What would that be? Let's say you you took these two two pieces combined. How would you describe these two pieces together, right? Well, isn't that a uh, one third? And that's one third. So how many thirds is that altogether? Well, you could say it's it's two thirds or two parts out of three to make the whole, right? Does that make sense? And now, just for fun, um, we'll look at money. Uh, hopefully, you know what these things are called. They're quarters, right? Ooh, there you go. They're they're called quarters, right? Now, um, they're also twenty five cents, and you know that. Uh, 25 cents plus 25 cents plus 25 cents plus 25 cents makes what? 
well, it's got to make a hundred cents, right? Or one dollar, right? And um, there are four of these that need, and they're all of equal value. The four parts added together make a whole dollar, right? So that's why we say if if, if we call this, you know, hundred cents is you know one whole dollar. These are all actually quarters of a dollar, basically, is what they are. I mean, that's one way of thinking about it. They're quarters, and so that's why we call them quarters because they're quarters of a dollar, right? And four of them add up to make a a, a whole. So what if I had just three of these? What would three of these be? One, two, three. How would you describe having three of these? One, two, that would be three quarters, wouldn't it? Three quarters, right? How about um, if you just had two of these coins? What would that be? Well, this is one quarter. This is one quarter, so how many quarters do I have? Two quarters, right? Now, two quarters can also be written as, because look, it's definitely 25 cent and 25 cent, that's definitely 50 cent, isn't it? And two quarters is one half of a dollar, isn't it? Fifty cents is half of a dollar, right? So it's just for fun. And now let's have a look at some other coins. I mean, if you take the dime, for example, how much is the dime worth? Dime is worth ten cent, right? And how many of these do you need to get a dollar? Ten cent. How many ten cents do I need to add up to get a dollar? To get a hundred cent. Well, it's got to be ten, right? So ten of these makes a dollar, and that's why this is in fact one tenth of a dollar, right? So just like we call this coin the quarter, we could easily call this coin the tenth. Why don't we? Who knows? Anyway, but we could. We could go back to tenth because it's one tenth of a dollar, right? How about the the uh, cent or the penny? How many cents does it take to make a dollar? Many cents to make a dollar? Hundred, right? So how could you write a cent in fraction form? Write a cent in fraction form. It's what fraction of a dollar? Or how many of these do you need to add up to get a hundred cents? You need a hundred of them, right? Hundred of these. So this is one part out of a hundred. One part out of one hundred to make a dollar. So it's one hundredth. So we could call the cent, we could call it the hundredth. Why don't we do that? We should. We should call this, this is the quarter, that's the tenth, and that's the hundredth. Now just for fun, what's the nickel? What fraction of a dollar is a nickel? Press pause and see if you can figure it out. The nickel is worth five cent. How many five cents do we need to add up to get to a hundred cent? Well, two of them add up to give ten cent, don't they? So would that be maybe twenty? Because you might know 20 times 5 is 100, right? Anyway, so um, 20 of these will make a dollar, so this is 1 20th of a dollar, okay? So basically, we could call that the uh, 20th instead of the nickel. How about that? Okay, all right, here's a quick fraction intro. Now, let's have a look at this um, vocabulary. The numerator is the top of a fraction, the denominator is the bottom of the fraction. So the numerator is the part, the denominator is the whole. So basically, a fraction is part over whole. Now just to confuse things further, they like you to learn off that this is numerator over denominator. Now, to remember this, you might think, for example, that n is uh, north, right? North is 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 up above, is on top, right? Okay, so this is the one that goes on top. Denominator, you could think down. So that's the one that's down on the bottom, right? Just for fun. Anyway, okay. So if I have a fraction one fifth, 
the numerator is the number on the top, that's 1. The denominator is the number on the bottom, 5. And um, and uh, well, let's just go on to uh, uh, 3 eighths. If you have 3 eighths, what's the numerator, what's the denominator? Write it down. The numerator is number 3, the number on top. Denominator is the number 8, the one on the bottom, right? How about 5 thirds? What's the numerator and the denominator? Denominator, right? Numerator is 5, denominator is 3. How about 3 halves? 3 over 2. What's the numerator and the denominator there? Numerator is 3, denominator is 2, right? Okay, so let's th look at uh, proper fractions and improper fractions. A proper fraction uh, is like a, you know, your kind of regular fraction where um, you've got, uh, well, it's like one fifth, where the uh, the bottom is bigger than the the the, the 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 numerator is smaller than than the than the denominator. The, 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 the top is smaller than the bottom. Okay, because we don't usually say. Uh, um, uh, and, and so basically this is a proper fraction not an improper fraction. And the fraction is either proper or improper. Okay. Um, 3 eighths uh, the top is smaller than the bottom. Okay. So it's kind of like it's something that you would, would say in, in everyday language. Um, you know we, we don't usually say things like 5 thirds. I mean that in fact what, what you, would, you would more often say is with a mixed number that becomes 1 and 2 thirds. Okay. So you you wouldn't say I want five thirds of a pizza. I want one pizza and two thirds as well added onto it, so to speak. So th this guy here, he's an improper fraction, right? Because the top is bigger than the bottom. So how about these guys, three eighths and three halves? Which is proper? Which is improper? Can you figure that out? Is three eighths a proper fraction or an improper fraction? Proper fraction is when the the uh, top is smaller than the bottom. So this is a proper, right? How about three halves? Proper or improper? So the numerator is greater than the denominator, therefore this is improper, right? Okay, so if you're dealing with something like the number six, that's a whole number, right? That's not even a fraction. So how can we give how can we give a numerator and a denominator and say whether it's proper or improper? Sure it's not even a fraction. But we can write it as a fraction. And I'll show you. Six can be written six divided by one. Oh, let me show you that. Six can be written six divided by one. Did you know that? Yep, indeed. Um I does that make sense? Uh, 1 into 6 goes 6 times, I guess you could think of it that way. 1 into 6 goes 6 times. 6 divided by 1 is 6. So in any case, um, yeah, 6 can be written 6 over 1, and now you can give numerator and denominator and go ahead with that. Okay. So the numerator would be 6, denominator 1. Is it proper? No. Is it improper? Yes, it's an improper fraction. Right. Um, so, see if you can figure out 4. Write it as a fraction first of all. 4 can be written how? 4 divided by 1 gives 4, doesn't it? Okay, the numerator is 4, the denominator is 1. Is it proper or improper? It is improper, right? Uh, how about x over y? What can you do with that? What's the numerator, first of all? What's the denominator? Numerator is x, denominator is y. And we don't know which is whether x or y is bigger because they're just letters, they're not numbers, so we can't do the proper or improper part at all on that. So uh, press pause on the video and do this one and this one, two fifths and then two. So please press pause, do it yourself, and then I'll do it, okay? Okay, so two fifths. The numerator 
is 2, the denominator is 5. Is it proper or improper? It is a proper fraction because the top is smaller than the bottom. Okay, proper fraction. Uh, 2, just the number 2. Get the numerator, denominator. First you have to write it as a fraction, right? 2 can be written. 2 over 1, right? The numerator is 2, denominator is 1. And is it proper? Nope. It is in fact improper because the numerator is greater than the denominator. Okay? So that number the 2 is an improper fraction.